A lot can change over the course of a year. With the arrival of 2024, I'm sure we're all thinking about how much we've changed in just the last 12 months. But what if you were to think back to three years ago? Maybe five? What about all the way back to 2014, a solid decade ago? How are you doing? My name is Ben, and today I wanted to talk about what lacrosse was like 10 years ago. 2014 was a year that had so much going for it. Events like the World Games, which, believe it or not, was actually played in my backyard of Commerce City, Colorado. Additionally, 2014 had both the NLL and MLL seasons, on top of having a great college lacrosse Final Four. It makes me so nostalgic thinking about this time period of lacrosse. This is right around when I started playing the sport, and I was incredibly interested in it. Based on my viewer demographics, I know this time period in pro lacrosse was very influential for you guys as well. But enough of that, let's just jump right into the video. So we'll go chronologically throughout the year, as that makes the most sense. And if it doesn't for you, I'm sorry. So to start with, we have the NLL season, which technically began on the 28th of December 2013, but the majority took place in 2014. At the time, the NLL only had nine teams, as opposed to the 18 we have today. For the East, we have the Rochester Nighthawks, the Toronto Rock, the Buffalo Bandits, the Philadelphia Wings, and the Minnesota Swarm. For the West, we have the Edmonton Rush, the Calgary Roughnecks, the Colorado Mammoth, and the Vancouver Stealth. As you can probably already tell, the league was still divided into the East and Western divisions which is a mistake I made on my most recent video covering the NLL, which some great commenters corrected me on and reminded me of the fact that the league has forgone this East and West division system for what I like to call the big blob of teams. But all joking aside, if you guys haven't checked out that video yet, absolutely go give it a watch after this. It's definitely my best performing video and I believe the best video I've put together overall. Now, 2014 brought some changes to the playoff bracket, as well as adding two more games a year, bringing up the total to 18 games. The Edmonton Rush would finish with the best record in the league, going 16-2, and, and the Minnesota Swarm would share the worst record with the Vancouver Stealth at 4-14. and This would also mark the beginning of the skid that would lead to the XL Energy Center not renewing the Swarm's lease in 2015, resulting in them moving to Georgia, which is their current location today. On to the playoffs. In the first round, the Buffalo Bandits would defeat the Toronto Rock 15-13, and then the Calgary Roughnecks would defeat my Colorado Mammoth 16-15 in overtime. In the second round, the Roughnecks would knock off the rush 2-1 after playing in the newly constructed playoff bracket with a 10-minute Game 3 minigame? I don't know, I just don't know why they would do this. It makes zero sense. I couldn't find too much more information on this format, so let me know in the comments if you know anything else. Rochester would defeat Buffalo in the same fashion, beating them in Game 3 of this new playoff format. Then in the championship round, the Rochester Nighthawks would become the first team in NLL history to win three straight league titles. This marked the team's fifth title in its history, which is still a soft spot for most Nighthawk fans. As when the team left Rochester in 2019 for Halifax, they took the records in titles with them creating an ever painful divide for most Rochester fans. And well, you can kind of see why. The leading goal scorer in the league was Dane Dobby for the Calgary Roughnecks with 51 goals. And Sean Evans, also on the Calgary Roughnecks, led the league with 79 assists. The 2014 college lacrosse landscape had some of the most recognizable names we see today in the PLL and NLL. Let me just list a few of them for you. Tom Schreiber, Michael Earhart, all three Thompson brothers, Trevor Baptiste, Wes Berg, Rob Pinnell, and of course, Tom LaCrosse. Now that last one I just thought was a really funny name and when it popped up while I was researching this video, I had to mention it. There's also probably a lot of names I'm missing. This age of college lacrosse was some of the best we've ever seen. One of the great milestones from this year was Lyle Thompson setting the all-time season goal record with ease while playing with his brothers at the University of Albany. But what mattered most was the national championship. For the final four, we had Duke, Denver, Notre Dame, and Maryland. Duke would defeat my Denver Pioneers 15-12, advancing to the final, and Notre Dame would defeat Maryland 11-6. So as you can tell already, we have a classic matchup of Duke versus Notre Dame. A matchup that has produced my favorite college lacrosse moment in history. It'll be this one right here. Duke the classic 
Face-offs are a team event. Three on three with the wing guys coming in from the sideline. The only other players who can move off the whistle are those two wings. Everybody else must remain in the boxes. Clean win by Costabile. Charging toward the net. He scores! It is a storybook ending for the Duke seniors with their first national championship in school history. Duke would wind up pulling out the victory, winning 11-9 and squashing Notre Dame's hopes yet again. As the spring came and went, the summer would have even more great lacrosse in store. The World Games would kick off in July of 2014 with the biggest games in history, with 38 teams participating from around the globe. It would be mostly disappointment for us Americans though. Despite the games being held on our very own home turf, the 2014 US men's team would be remembered as a bit of a cocky group, as former players on the team have come out after the fact saying they kind of assumed they could just waltz their way to the gold medal game and defeat Canada. Which if you can't tell already, was not true. They lacked a lot of good chemistry and Canada would exploit this, defeating the US 8-5 in the gold medal game. Team Canada would use a slowed down style of play to prevent the star-studded US roster from truly taking over. The more footage I see of this game, the more I realize how masterfully coached this was, so kudos to the Canadian head coach. The Canadians would take gold, the US would take silver, and the Iroquois national team would get its first medal ever. The Thompson brothers single-handedly willed this team to a bronze medal. It really is incredible. Miles Thompson would finish the bronze medal game with three goals and an assist. Lyle would finish with two goals and two assists in their dominant 16-5 win over the Aussies. Finally, there was the 2014 MLL season, which kicked off in April but would be prolonged due to the World Games break it took. At the time, the league consisted of eight teams in one conference, and these teams were the Rochester Rattlers, the Denver Outlaws, the New York Lizards, the Ohio Machine, the Boston Cannons, the Chesapeake Bayhawks, the Florida Launch, and the Charlotte Hounds. This season would be a huge success for the MLL, one of their best performing seasons as a whole with a lot of competitive teams. The Rattlers, Machine, Outlaws, and Lizards would all make it to the playoffs. Rochester would defeat Ohio 15-11, and my Denver Outlaws would eliminate the New York Lizards 14-13 in a fantastic game. In the MLL Championship game, the Outlaws would finally make it over the hump and defeat the Rattlers 12-11, securing the team's first MLL Championship in its short history. For regular season milestones, there's some familiar names at the top. Marcus Holman would lead the entire league in scoring, Casey Powell would win the MVP on the newly minted Florida launch, and John Grant Jr. would win the MVP of the playoffs on, who guessed it, the Denver Outlaws. And that would be it for the year. From January 1st until August 23rd, there was consistent lacrosse, and it was good lacrosse at that. Paul Rabel was in his cannons prime, Casey Powell and John Grant Jr. were still dominating the MLL as seasoned veterans. The fresh blood in the league, Holman, Schreiber, and McArdle were showcasing just how bright the future would be. Schreiber gets the pick, gets free! Oh, I'm if they getting over, got a mic like Colt because the kid, the Cody.